Hello there my friends, hope you all are having a fantastic day right now. In this video, we shall be building a really simple and basic chat application using Python. So let's get started. So in this application, we will be having a server and two clients. And these two clients are the users who want to chat with each other and they do so via the server. So that's what we are going to be achieving in this video. We will have to write the program for the server and the clients separately. So we will be having this file called sockserver.py to write the program for the server and another file called sockclient.py to program the client. So let's get started. So we'll be using two modules in this video and those two are the socket module and the threading module. And this program will also give you a little introduction to threading and threads in Python. So that would be a good learning experience as well. So the data that we are going to be dealing here is going to be strings. So we need to transfer these strings from the client to the server and from the server to another client and so on. So in order to do that, we will be using sockets and you could imagine sockets as being carriers of this data. So Python provides us with a socket class which we can use to pack the data and send it across. So first we will have to create an instance of the socket class. So let me call the object as socket server and this will be an instance of the socket class and the socket module. So once we have got an instance of our socket, we can go ahead and look at the IP addresses and ports. So IP addresses are generally used to refer to a computer on the network and ports act as a gateway for connections. So that's all you need to know about these. So first let us get the IP address of our computer. So you can get that using socket dot get host name um, yeah so that's the function and let's put that in a variable called host so this variable host has a string which is the IP address of the current computer and let's also have a variable called port and set it to 5000 so 5000 is the port where our server is going to be listening for any connections so it could have been anything but I just chose 5000 and just make sure that you choose a number greater than 1024. So now that we have got our port, we can bind our socket to that port so that it looks for any incoming connections. So all you've got to do is socket server dot bind and it takes a tuple of the host and the port as an argument. So once we have binded our socket to the port, we are ready to accept connections. So yeah, but before receiving connections, we have to make sure that we specify the size of the network. So what I've got to do is socket server dot listen. And for now, let's have the number as two because let's keep it simple, two clients and one server. So that's that. And now we can receive connections. Now, in order to accept connections, we can use the accept function of the socket server instance so socket server dot accept and this returns the connection and the address so we will need to store those two in two variables so connection one equals connection one comma address one equals socket server dot accept connection two and address two equals socket server dot accept so address one and address two are strings and they denote the address ip address of the connection or the computer that's trying to connect to you once you have got these two connections you are ready to send or receive data so in order to do that let's have a function called send and in send we will be taking two arguments that is the from connection and to connection and these two are of the connection type 
So when we pass this to the send function, we'll have to receive the data and transfer it to the next connection. So first we'll always receive the data from the from connection and this receive function takes the maximum size of the data as an argument and for this I'll give 512 and dot receive dot decode because we need to decode and convert it back into a string in order for the other client to look at it and once you've got the data you have to store it in a variable called data and now after receiving it the server has to send it to the to connection to the next client so in order to do that we can use to connection dot send data dot encode so that's how the data can be sent to another client so this is what the server does it takes the data from one client and encodes it and send it to the next client that's what the server does and the reason we wrote this function as a function is because we are going to be using threads and the reason we are going to be using threads is because we want to be able to send and receive data from the clients at the same time. And as you guys would probably know, threads are chunks of code which run at the same time, that is simultaneously. And that's exactly what's required here. And if we do not use threads, then the data transfer will be a one-way road. That is, the server at a particular time can only receive or send the data and not both. So that should not happen in a chat application. So let's create two threads, T1 and T2. So T1 equals threading dot thread. Um, yep. So threading dot thread target equals send args equals connection one connection two. So let me explain this to you in a jiffy. So the threading module has threading class and the constructor takes a lot of arguments and two of them are important to us, the target and the args. So the target is the function that this thread is going to execute and args are the arguments that we are going to pass through the function. And as you know, from connection and to connection are the arguments that send takes and connection one and connection two will be the arguments for thread one. And thread one, T1 is the object of this class. So that should be clear to you by now. And let me copy this and paste it here and just change this to connection two and connection one. So the reason we are doing this is because the roles are reversed for the two threads. And when one thread is busy receiving and sending from first client to the second client, the other thread is doing the same thing for the second client to the first client. So that's how these threads are going to work. So we have to start both the threads. So t1.start, t2.start, and that would start the threads t1 and t2, and they would go about doing their work. And once they are started, they should also have an end. And only once both the threads have ended, can we continue with the main program execution. So we'll just write t1.join and t2.join and that should be it. Lastly, we will also need to close the connections. So connection one dot close, connection two dot close. So that should do it for the server side code. This is how the server is going to work. So now let's go ahead and write the client side code. So I am in this second file called sockclient.py and here we'll be writing the program for the client and how it should send and receive data. So we'll again be importing socket module and the threading module. We'll be creating a socket again, call it socket client, socket dot socket. This should be clear to you by now. And the host is again, socket dot get host name because I'm going to be running the client program too in this computer and the port again will be 5000 because that is the gateway to the server and for the client we don't need to bind because we are not going to listen for any connections incoming connections so we will need to connect instead so 
socket client dot connect host and port that is the tuple and yep that's that so now we are ready to receive or send the data so again we will be needing two functions here one to receive and one to send so send and no arguments this time so let's take the input first from the user and store it in a variable so data is the input that the user is going to give and all we have got to do is encode the data and send it to the server so socket client dot send data dot encode yeah. so that's that that is the send function right there and now we can write our receive function so data equals socket client dot receive if you remember the same function we used in the server too and the maximum size will be 512 dot decode and we'll just print it to the console so that we can see what they have sent so in order to differentiate the received message we'll just print a symbol something like this to indicate that that message was received so comma data so that's that that is the receive function a small change that we would like to make here is to put this in a while loop infinite while loop so that we keep waiting for sending data or receiving data and the same we'll do here too because without the while loop you can only send one time and receive one time and that's that that will complete the program and exit so that's not what we want so that completes the send and receive functions now we can move ahead and create our threads so threading dot thread if you remember target equals send no arguments so leave that blank and t2 equals threading dot thread target equals receive so if you observe the difference between the client and the server the two threads here perform two different operations one sends the data and one receives the data but in the server side code the two threads do the same kind of operation but they are for two different connections so that's the difference in how we are using threads in the client program and the server program now we'll just have to start our threads and join both of them in the end because that would enable the main function to continue so that is that so now we have completed with the socket client and the socket server programs and now we can go ahead and test our code and the last thing that we want to do in the server code is that we'll want to put this in a while loop too because that is quite obvious we want to keep listening for connections from both the sides and doing it till the program is stopped by the users so that's that and now let's go ahead and test our program let's start the server so the server is running now what i'm going to do is start two consoles and run the client socket program in both these consoles so let me put them side by side so that you can see what's happening so let's start it here i've already got the path copied and yep that's running and so yeah now we have got both the clients and the server running so we should be able to chat so let's write something like hello what's up and there it is you see this that was sent from this program to this program so now we can write something here and it should be reflected here so something like hi what you doing i'm writing a program it's awesome so yep that's that i hope you got the idea of how this works so this is a really fun thing to do in python and it actually helps in understanding some important concepts like sockets ip addresses networking and also threading as we saw in this video so 
the chat application that we just created successfully ran on this computer when the clients were from this computer. So you could also copy the client side code to another computer on the same network and connect to the server using the internal IP of the server and get it to work on any other computer on LAN. And the fun thing is you can also get it to work over the internet, anywhere over the internet by changing this to the public IP or the external IP of the server. But you may come across some problems and those problems are generally caused due to firewalls and you may need to forward certain ports and stuff like that. I may do a future video on how you have to configure all that stuff in order to get it work over the internet but yep I'll probably do it if you guys want me to do it so that's that and I'll be ending the video here so bye for now guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.